Tell me, have you ever woken up from a dream and you feel really angry at someone even though you know consciously that they haven't even done anything in real life? Now, this shows you that the brain finds the difference between a real or an imaginal act irrelevant if you experience it emotionally, negatively or positively. To you, if you feel it strongly, it is very real and no one can tell you otherwise. And this is where neuroscience, which is my background, has a distinct crossover with manifestation. Yes, your brain neurologically understands where that sensory information is coming from, whether that be from an external experience, your day-to-day -day life, at work, with friends, and from what you have created within your imagination. It does know the difference. But here's where it gets it's rather interesting. No matter where we are getting that sensory information from, if it provokes a strong emotional reaction or a response within you, if you feel it, the brain records that as an experience and you know it happened beyond doubt or reason. And this is exactly what Neville Goddard calls the state of wish fulfilled and what Dr. Joe Dispenza calls heart and mind coherence. That must be achieved in order to make that significant shift you're looking for. It means you have fully experienced the end goal to the point where your heart, which he believes is linked to our emotions, and your mind are in agreement. There is no conflict over the existence of your desired experience, and so it will be made manifest. And that, I have found, is the state people find the hardest to achieve. So we're going to put that innate skill of ours, our imagination, to better use by learning how to create the state of the wish fulfilled, which, when done correctly, automatically forms a belief that it is yours, that it is done, and removes all doubt so that you can let go automatically and allow God, the universe, to bring it forth into the 3D reality, our kingdom on earth. But first, we need to go over some ground rules or the fundamentals of manifestation, which helps us in achieving the state of the wish fulfilled. Every outcome imaginable, anything that you desire, already exists now. Achieving the state of the wish fulfilled only allows you to shift into that reality timeline. This is why Abraham Hicks speaks of alignment. You're aligning with your desired reality wherein you already have that which you desire to experience. Where we create our reality, similarly to where we create our emotions, visions, thoughts, beliefs, assumptions, is all within. It is emphasized throughout Neville Goddard's works that having faith in the power of God and the creative imagination is vital. By trusting in the divine source, you can let go of the need to control every aspect of the manifestation process and allow your desires to flow naturally. God, the universe, will bring it forth. It is not our responsibility to figure out how or to overcome any perceived limitation or block in our way of having that which we want. And we know this because in the Bible, Matthew 6.6, 6, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. Everything happens in the eternal now. There is no past or future. So in order to have anything you desire, you must feel it as if you have it now. We create our wish fulfillment before sleep. You will have heard Neville speak of the state akin to sleep, also known as SATs. This means we enter into an alpha and theta brainwave state where we are so deeply rooted in the present moment, we experience that deep relaxation, creativity, and a state of subconscious awareness. That is where we create our wish fulfillment, our imaginal act, our desired end result. When you've achieved your desired state through this practice, you will feel it is done, feel grateful for the experience and have mind and heart coherence. So you will not be wondering if you've done it right or wonder when it is going to happen in the 3D. So you will repeat this practice as many times as it takes to achieve that absolute knowing that it is done. We will never know the path God will take 
which brings forth our manifestations. So there's no point in getting upset over what occurs. What happens in your 3D reality is always subject to change, it's never final. Instead, set your minds on things above and not on earthly things, Colossians 3.2. So step one, get clear on what it is you want. I suggest you take some time to sit somewhere quiet and write down what it is you want specifically. The easiest way I have found to establish exactly what it is that I want was to go further than what most people would consider the end. For example, if you want to be married to your SP, you don't imagine the engagement or the wedding. Instead, imagine celebrating your first or even second year anniversary. If you want money, don't go for what you think you can get or worse, what you think you need. For example, say you want 10K, right? $10,000, 10,000 euros. Does that really fill you with joy? These are the questions you've got to ask. You'll have an emotional response to this. Would getting what you actually need bring you a sense of fulfillment? Would that amount cover everything you wanted to do? The best way to determine this is when you're writing down your desired end, notice the change in how you feel and keep adding more detail until you feel that emotional shift into satisfaction of, yes, this is exactly what I want. Step two, create the scene or scenes. Now, you want to get clear on the scene you will create. For example, are you at a generic restaurant with your partner celebrating this anniversary? Or where are you? What is he or she wearing? Are there candles? What type of restaurant are you at? Because this will help you take note of what your senses will experience. Is it with friends or family? Do you have to arrange a babysitter because you already have your first child together? You want to create a full bodied picture, right? So you're priming your brain for the context in which the scene is going to take place. When it comes to finances, you don't want to limit where this money is coming from. So I wouldn't suggest you just imagine it coming from your work or even being in your bank account or PayPal and so forth. Instead, you want to ask yourself, if I had X amount of money, what would I be doing? Would I be buying something specific? Would I be messaging or having a conversation with a particular friend or family member? What would they be saying when I told them of this news? Would I be packing for a trip, looking at luggage online, organizing a dog or a cat sitter and so forth? Build the scene and get clear on paper. Step three, sats. That evening, you will enter in the state akin to sleep, which is what I touched on previously in our reminders. You're going to get into a very relaxed state so that you enter alpha brain waves. And from there, you will live in the first person, your detailed scene. You're going to smell the food, touch the walls, feel your feet walking into that restaurant, holding hands with your SP, feel the joy of sharing the good news, discussing your travel plans, whichever is relevant to the scene that you've created. And you can repeat that scene as many times as you want until you naturally drift off into a restful sleep. Now, many people who try this the first few times end up feeling so excited that the adrenaline wakes them up. <laughs> I've been there. It is the excitement of actually doing what is required to pray or use your imagination in the way in which it was designed to be used. However, excitement is not the desired state, so persist over that coming week. You want to live from that state within your imagination to the point where you feel love, joy, gratitude that you have experienced it. And you only have to get this right one time, that's the genius of this, for it to be made manifest by God or the universe. And you will know that you have achieved this when you feel absolutely no doubt at all that it happened, that you have experienced it, similar to the example I gave you about the dream. The rest is faith that God will bring it forth onto the 3D reality. This means that you won't have to concern yourself with how you feel from that moment on. Even though making yourself feel good and making sure that you check in with how you feel is important because, and this includes calm, it's good for your overall well-being and human experience. But once you have achieved that state of wish fulfillment, it will be made manifest by God and nothing can stop it, not even how you feel henceforth. Step four. So once this is done, Neville instructs us to focus on the divine source from which everything emanates, right? Which is God, the universe. And many teachers fail to mention this key step. Instead of becoming too fixated on physical things or circumstances, focus on giving thanks 
praising our Creator for bringing it forth, for giving you this power, this ability, for giving you this experience. And we do this through gratitude or reciting the Habonopono prayer, our Lord's prayer, because forgiveness is an act of love and love is the fulfillment of the law, Romans 13, 10. Love is the highest vibration because God is love. If you want me to create a guided meditation that you can do sorry, that you can download for free from my website, let me know in the comments and I shall create that for you. Thank you so much for all of the love, support, likes and subscribes. I love hearing from you in the comments and growing this community with you. I have created a private Facebook group if you wish to meet like-minded people on this journey of I am and all links to how you can receive one-to-one -one guidance with me are linked in the description box below. Now, here's what YouTube thinks will be helpful for you to watch next with love and forever in a state of wish fulfilled. See you soon.